Well, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to what is now the sixth episode of What Have We Learned This Week? Uh, this is a show where I share technology tips, tricks, and short lessons that I have provided to my customers over the last week with you. Uh, if you're not familiar with me already, I'm Jonathan. I work for Minnesota State Services for the Blind as a technology trainer. Uh, my clients range from low vision to totally blind, and I help them stay independent through their use of technology like computers, tablets, and smartphones. We are recording this episode today. It is November 20th, 2020. I'm just saying that because we're archiving uh, all the old episodes now, and uh, we'll be sending another email out with links to uh, those archived episodes for those of you who want to see the other five episodes who weren't attending us or just starting with us right now. Uh, so today's topics, we're covering three, one big topic and two Screen short dimmed. topics. Um, and uh, we're going to be first talking about the, uh, the Bard mobile app. We'll talk about what that is, and I'll be doing a demonstration of how it works. Uh, then after that, we're going to talk about some features in, in Siri, specifically how to get some more advanced business information. So finding out more of like what time things are open uh, and uh, what businesses are nearby uh, with Siri. And then we're going to end out a, a, a small overview of podcasts. Now, this is a setup for a future episode where we'll do like we're doing today with Bard, uh, a nice step-by-step hands-on uh, how to get into some podcasts. Uh, so we're going to be talking today about what they are. Uh, I'm going to mention some of my favorites, and I'm going to give you a quick shortcut if you've got a smartphone uh, or uh, or a Echo on how to just quickly play a podcast. But we'll talk more in a future episode about subscribing and managing subscriptions. It gets a little complicated. It's a big topic, so we're going to keep it real brief for today and go in digging real deep next time. And Screen dimmed. Depending on how all this, uh, all this uh, ends up, we're going to uh, do some Q&A, uh, depending on how much time we have. I had to kind of throw a little bit of the demos together at the last minute here, so I actually don't know how long we're going to go. Uh, but just in case we reach the end, uh, we'll do some Q&A. And I also had an a interesting question a client asked me just yesterday, and I'm like, maybe I'll share that the Q&A section with everybody. Uh, so once again, remember future episodes, uh, if you do have questions, you're attending us on YouTube uh, through the phone service some other way, uh, and you're not able to ask questions during the Q&A section or <coughs> individual and you don't want to unmute yourself, which I totally understand, uh, you can uh, also call in to our question hotline, uh, or you can send a text message uh, to the phone number 320 Four two eight zero one two two. I'll repeat that in just a moment. But that number again, you can text it or you can call it. If you call it, you just get a voicemail. Uh, you just get my voice saying, "Please ask your question," and then that'll send the recording to me. Screen the text message to me, and I'll use that for um, uh, future episodes. So once again, that number slower is three two zero four two eight. 0122. Uh, also, if you'd like to join our mailing list, uh, if you're not getting our mailing list here, or you've got uh, friends that you think might be interested in attending this as well, this is open to absolutely anybody who wants to. Uh, you can forward those uh, emails that I send out to you to anybody you want. They're not specific to you, uh, but you can also send people to blind.support slash sign up. And that's not W, you don't have to put www, although if you do, that works fine too. You just have to go into your web browser and type blind.support slash sign up. Uh, and then they'll be added to our email list. One more time, blind.support forward slash sign up. All lowercase, no spaces. Okay, done with our big introduction. We can actually get into it. So we're going to start today talking about Bard Mobile. Okay. Green dimmed. Uh, so what is BARD, first of all? So first of all, the word BARD, when we're talking about BARD Mobile, stands for Braille and Audio Reading Download. Uh, and it is part of the National Library Service, which is also part of the Library 
of Congress. So what this is, it allows uh, access for eligible users uh, who have enrolled through the National Library Service uh, uh, for, the, uh, for the Blind and Print Disabled, or NLS, National Library Service, at the Library of Congress. Uh, and it provides free audio and braille reading materials to residents of the United States and American citizens living abroad who cannot read standard print. So that includes low vision and blind individuals, but also people with a disability that prevents them from reading or even holding a printed page. So maybe someone with cerebral palsy and they're unable to uh, literally turn the pages of a book, they also can get access to these audiobooks. Uh, if you are um, currently getting services Screen from dimmed. the state, you can talk to your counselor uh, about this. Uh, if you're not already signed up, if you're not from Minnesota uh, and you're uh, viewing this, you can also find out, uh, sign up or find out more about the service uh, through an 800 number. That's 1-888-NLS-READ or 1-888-657-7323. Uh, or you can visit the web, web address uh, www.loc library of congress dot gov forward slash that all may read that's loc dot gov slash that all may read uh, and that'll take you to uh, tell you more about the service and take you to each state's individual uh, national library service uh, uh, and uh, even give you uh, online forms you can fill out to join or if you've working with the state services for the blind counselor uh, you can contact them uh, as well. Anybody who's working with state services for the blind is going to be eligible Screen dimmed. for this service. Uh, uh, but if you're not uh, if you're not already receiving services, you can uh, you can actually just search the state and Bard, and you'll um, like Minnesota Bard, and you'll get to it pretty quickly. Uh, so the Bard services are actually available through three different methods. Uh, they have physical players. Uh, that they send out with audiobook cartridges. So it's literally going, everything's doing through, going through the mail. Uh, and they will mail out, you can request specific books or you tell what type of books you want. They mail out cartridges. Uh, you put them in the book player and you play them. Uh, another way is through the Bard website uh, where you can download the books to your computer and then load them onto a cartridge or put them in a specialty player uh, that can play those types of audiobooks like a uh, like a Victor Reader or Victor Reader Stream, for example. But today we're going to be talking about downloading books right from a mobile app, the Bard mobile app. And this app is available uh, for iOS and for Android devices. So that'd be your iPhones and your iPads. Screen dimmed. Uh, but also uh, your Android devices, your Samsung phones, HTC phones, uh, any kind of, almost pretty much any smartphone out there can download this app. You'll find it in the Google Play Store on Android, and you'll find it uh, in the App Store for iOS. So we're going to start out here. I'm actually going to start the very beginning of this with voice over off, and I'm going to show two low vision settings for those of us who are using the low vision settings. And then we're going to start switch on voiceover, and we're going to do the rest of the demo with a screen reader. Uh, so if you are using the visuals, uh, you can just know that you don't have to do the flicks and the double taps. You just touch the various buttons here. But the majority of my viewers are using screen readers, and so that's the way I'm going to be demoing it. But at the very beginning, we'll do a short section on just some of the visual settings. And, and I'll walk those through if you're in a screen reader as well. I just want to make this available to voice over uh, the variety of people I have uh, attending these. So uh, I'm going to flip over here and immediately see I'm having a bit of a technical problem. I wanted to show my phone screen here. We're going to just connect and reconnect and see if my screen screen shows up. If it doesn't, we're just going to improvise here and I'm just going to be holding it up to the screen. Not as exciting, which is what I think I'm going to end up doing here. Let me try this one more time. So those of you who are attending my phone or not individuals, I'm supposed to see uh, my phone screen up on the up on the display, but of course, that is not happening for me. So 
we are going to improvise here and keep going forward. So, um, I'm actually going to flip on voice over on messages. Voice over here. Maps. Messages. And it looks like that's playing through, and it looks like you should be able to hear that. I'm going to go ahead and open up the Bard mobile app. Uh, I've already got it installed. You can search the app store Bard Mobile. It'll be the first result. Uh, it's a, uh, there's no other apps named similarly, uh, so it's easy to find. Open Bard Mobile. All right. Oh, so when I open up the Bard Mobile app, it is, uh, for the first time, it's going to ask you to put in an email address uh, and a password. Uh, that's one that you'd set up when you register with them. And if you ever get lost, they'll give you a phone number to call and they can help you reset it uh, through the, through the uh, various uh, libraries out there. But uh, the main app is built in uh, the similar way that the phone app is built on your uh, devices as well. So what that means is on the phone itself, there is a section of buttons across the bottom. And these buttons or tabs, as they're referred to, uh, navigate you to the four different sections of the app. Those tabs go from left to right bookshelf, collection of the books that you have already loaded on your device for playing, get, uh, get books, which is where we go to download, settings, and finally, when a book is playing, an option now reading shows up at the end. So the first thing I mentioned is that there's some visual settings we can adjust. And I'm going to do those with voiceovers so you can hear. And I'm going to hold up so people can see what we're doing here. So the settings is one of those four tabs across the bottom. And if you are a voiceover user, the easiest way to get those tabs is one of two ways. One is to do the four finger tap. We take four fingers, we tap on the bottom half of the screen and it jumps us to the bottom. Or we can take our finger and we can drag it near the bottom of the screen and we'll find the tab buttons that way. I personally prefer the four finger tap. I, I find it a little bit more reliable, but I've also got pretty skinny fingers and I can fit all four fingers on my phone screen. Some people find that to be particularly challenging, especially if they're using a smaller phone. But I'm going to do the four finger tap on the bottom half. Tab bar selected. Now reading tab four of four. It puts me in the tab bar. There's four options that I can flick to the left to move through them. Settings tab three of four. So the first option, uh, the second option from the right, the bottom right is settings. I'm going to tap on that or with voice over do a double tap. Settings heading. And there are three sections for settings, audio settings, braille and display settings and user account settings. Uh, the, if you wanna change the appearance or the display of things, we're gonna to go to the braille and display section. So in my case, I'm gonna to flick to the right. If you're using the visuals, you're just gonna tap on braille and display settings. Audio settings button, braille and display settings button. And I'm gonna give that a tap. Or contrast, tap. black and white button. And there's a section for contrast, black and white. And if I double tap on that, I can adjust this to a uh, black background with white text if I want to. Uh, I can uh, put yellow text on a black background. I can adjust the way that it looks. So right now, it's a pretty bright white display. If I double tap on black contrast, and white button, selected black and white button. I'm gonna flick to the right and choose a yellow. White and, and black, but black and yellow, but yellow and black button. And I'm gonna give that a selected, double tap. Selected yellow and black. Contrast, so now, yellow, braille, and display settings button. I have in the background black on the background of each of the, uh, the buttons or menus, and I've got yellow text that appears. So I've got a much higher contrast. The text is still small. If I go into the accessibility set settings on my phone and I go to the uh, large type setting, I can actually increase the font size and this app will match it as well. I can do a very large print by going into accessibility and going into the display settings and changing up the text or in the app by going into the braille and contrast, display settings yellow and black button and setting them to a higher contrast black black background black and I'm white switch button black back to selected black and, white. black and white contrast so it's just the default size braille so and display if you are setting using the visuals in the settings display and settings 
you can set up a nice high contrast setting. Uh, the other thing I do, and I do this on a lot of people's phones, is um, I'll go into the settings again. And instead of going to Braille and display settings, I'm going to flip to the right again. User account settings button. And there's user account settings. And what I actually like in here, I'm going to double tap to get it. Card account app, button. Is I have a section in here called show me. I'm going to flip to the right. Download over mobile network, auto lock during download, switch, show me, both audio and braille, button. So there's a button to show me both audio and braille. So most of the people I know who are using uh, Bard Mobile, who I'm teaching or using a screen reader, are actually looking for audio books. But the uh, Bard Mobile app can also download braille books. And you would need a braille display connected to your phone to read those books in braille. Uh, so we're not going to be covering the Braille aspect of this, just uh, but uh, you can actually download a book, get it in Braille with the Braille reader, and if you are a proficient Braille reader, you can read the books that way instead of audiobooks. And anybody can tell you who's done uh, enough Braille work knows that reading with Braille is very different than listening to an audiobook. It's much, much closer to how a sighted person reads a book, right? We're, we're, we're definitely taking in the book a very different way. Instead of audio processing, we're getting all the letters and uh, we're, we're oftentimes reading it back in our own head. Uh, it's a very different experience, but we're gonna be sticking to audio. And if you're only using it for audio or you're only using it for Braille, for example, you can double tap on Both the audio and rate. Braille button. So audio only button. Flick to the right, there's an audio only and a Braille only option. So when you, this will just speed up navigation with the screen reader. When I get into the bookshelf, I'm not going to have a audiobook and a Braille section. I'm just going to have an audiobook section, or I'm just going to have a Braille section. So I'm going to switch my selected audio only to audio only for the point of this demonstration here. Okay, that's all our little settings. Uh, let's get into the the real good stuff. Let's talk about finding and downloading a book uh, from the service. So. Um, the first thing I want to do is I need to navigate to the Get Books tab uh, in the app. So visually, the Get Books is the second from the bottom right. Uh, with VoiceOver, I'm going to need to go to that tab bar. So use your preferred method. I'm going to do the four finger tab, tab the bar. Now half. reading tab four or four. I'm going to flip to the left now and selected settings tab Get Books tab two of four. Find the Get Books one finger double tap. Get Books heading. I am in the get books section. What we see in the get books section is uh, some various, uh, uh, some different ways I can navigate or get books. So there's a wish list. We're going to come back to that because that's a very, uh, very, very useful tool. In fact, when we search for a specific book, like we've got a, an exact book in mind and we want to search there, uh, the online bookstore, we're actually going to add it to the wish list and come back to that. Wish list. I'm going to flip to the right again. Recently added to Bard. We have a list of all the books that have been most recently added. They're in no particular, most of the time in, in not a particular order. Uh, they are literally as they've been added to the system. So you'll find a mix of every type of book uh, imaginable, from mystery to children's book, uh, just literally just what is new in the bookstore. It's an interesting way to explore. Um, if I keep going... Previous downloads. So books I've previously downloaded. I'm going to flick to the right again. Most popular books. We've got our most popular books. We're going to start by downloading a popular book, and then we're going to search for a specific book or actually a specific book series as an example. So I'm going to double tap on popular books. I'm going to click, and now it's thinking. It's looking up and grabbing, uh, I believe, the next uh, 50 books. Hush. Patterson, James. There it goes. And it's going to load in uh, 50 books from a list. And I can, uh, the first book that came up was a book called Hush. I'm going to flip to the right. More info, Hush. Patterson, James slash Fox, Candice. Total time, eight hours, five minutes. Button. Give you some Actions available. About that book. I'm going to flip to the right again. Good and valuable consideration. A reacre slash Heller story. Child, Lee. Total time, 47 minutes. Actions available. So I've got a book here. It's by uh, Lee Child here. He does the Jack Reacher series, for example. And it's a shorter, uh, a shorter book. Uh, I'm not as familiar with this one here. 
And you can see it said the name of the book, said it was Child Lee, gave me the time, and said there were more actions available. So using voiceover, we can then start to flick up and down. Remember, when there's more actions, we can do the up and down uh, with one finger uh, to see what the options are. I'm going to flick down. More info. I hear more info. Let's go again. Download. There's a quick download. So if I want this book, I can double tap to download it. But if you keep going, there's some very interesting things here. Add to wish list. Add to wish list. All books by Child Lee. And now it gives me the option to look up all the books by this particular author. So if I double tap now, one finger. Empty list. Books. 61 hours. A reoccur novel. Child Lee. Total time 11 hours, 35 minutes. Actions so available. So what's done is it's loaded all 31 Lee Child books that they have available in, uh, in, in the uh, uh, through Bard. And yeah. I can navigate through them. Right now, it's going to list them all uh, alphabetically. So 61 hours, flick to the right. More info, 61 hours, a, reoccur a wanted man, a reoccur novel, child, more info, a want bad luck and trouble, a Jack reoccur novel, child. There we go. You notice it says Jack reoccur. That's voiceover kind of mispronouncing the Reacher name, for example. But uh, I can flip through here and I can find uh, more books this way. And if I flick up or I'm going to flick down. More info. Download. I have a download option. I can double tap to download, download. book. Downloading. Bad luck and trouble. A Jack Reacher novel. Child Lee. So it's going to start downloading that book uh, immediately. Now I'm going to go back. Uh, all right now I've got just all books by this one author. Uh, and I can do, I can flick to the left till I get to the back button. Or I can do my two finger scrub, which is my favorite way of doing it. Hush. Patterson, James slash Fox. Takes me back to that list. Now I'm back in the list that has all of the recent books. Now, if you're not using voiceover, if you're using the large print and you want to do that same sort of thing, what you're going to do is you're going to find that info button. More info, hush. Patterson, James slash Fox. Looks like a little blue eye. And it's to the right of each name of each book. And I'm going to tap on that. Title, hush. It's going to open up more information about it. And there is a button that looks like a blue circle with three white dots, and it's the author. Name. More actions button. More actions button. If I double tap on that, or oh, more tap actions. At once, we'll get that same list that you just heard. We'll get a downloads, add to wish list, all books by this author. Uh, uh, you'll also get all books in that particular category. In this case, this was suspense fiction. Um, Oh, you might have heard that ding dong sound. That's the book is done downloading and is ready for me to listen to it if I want. Uh, so that's kind of an interesting way if you're exploring those recently added or most popular books, you can use this actions or the info button to basically kind of jump, use that as a jumping off point. I found an author in that list and I want to get other books by that author. I found books and there's a series and I want to get other books in that series. Um, it's a very interesting way to be able to uh, navigate. Uh, and also good for browsing. But what if I have a specific book in mind? So I want to now search the Bard webpage and find a specific book and download it. So this is a little bit trickier. Uh, so I'm going to go back now to the beginning of the get books here. So right now I've got a pop-up menu open. I'm going to do my two finger scrub. Audio books, back button. I'm back in the details list. I'm going to do it again. Hush. Audio books. Patterson, James. I'm in the audio books list. Do it again. Wish list. Most popular books. Now I'm back on the main get books where I started the most popular books. I could also navigate it to that tab bar at the bottom and double tapped on get books to go back, whichever way. So I'm back on the get books section and I'm going to now navigate to the option uh, called Bard website. So I'm gonna to flick to the right here. Browse magazines. We have the magazine section. Bard website. And the Bard website. So the Bard website's where we go if we want to search for a specific book. Now, I actually really, if you've got a computer and you got a smartphone, know that you can actually go to the Bard webpage, search for books, add them to your wish list, then go to your phone 
go to get books and you'll find them in the wish list section. Uh, now we're going to be doing everything on the phone today, but it's also good to know if you are really good at navigating on the computer, maybe you're using the low, you're, you're low vision, you're using uh, uh, magnification, which can be on a big display, or if you're just really fast on your uh, JAWS or a voiceover screen reader on your, on your desktop computer, uh, you can do it that way. But we're going to do it all from the phone. So I'm going to go to this BARD website, which is the last option in the Get Books section. In progress. And it's loading up that web page. List books alphabetically by author's last name. And I'm now in uh, the Bard web page. What's literally happened is the web page for Bard has been loaded uh, inside of the Bard mobile app. So what I have is an entire web page. Um, now, sometimes it doesn't start at the very top. This is what's been happening to me here. It said uh, by author last name. That's not the beginning of the web page. It actually dropped me uh, in the middle. And also you might notice the visuals, everything's shifted to the side here. That's okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna jump to the top of this. We're gonna use that four finger technique again. Uh, and the top half. Get books, back button. And now if I start flicking to the right, I'll be back at the top of the page. I use the four finger tap sometimes to get to the top and bottom uh, when uh, the web page doesn't load quite the way I want it to. If you're not using voiceover and using low vision, know that because it's a web page, you can do the pinch to zoom in and make the web page larger for navigating as well. Um, also, because this is a web page, if you are particularly proficient at using voiceover on your iPhone on web pages, know that all the techniques that you can use on in Safari will also work in this web version of BARD. That means if you're confident using the rotor, uh, you can navigate by headings and they've got headings, form fields, links. Uh, it's an entire web page. So now you can use those shortcuts as well. We're not gonna assume though, that you're using any of those techniques. I'm just, we're just going to rely on that four finger tap to put you at the top. Know that you could also just touch the top left corner of the screen to jump there. I like the four finger tap because I feel it's a little bit more accurate, but, uh, and then we're going to flick to the right. Bard heading backward dimmed button one forward dimmed button two of two. It is a back and forward button like a web browser does. Minnesota Braille in talking book library image, a white and green logo on the blue background. And I'm going to flick to the right now, and I want to find some books. I'm looking specifically for a text box for searching the collection. So I'm going to flick to the right. You're going to hear some things that sound familiar, things that actually showed up in the just plain get books section here. Bar main page, heading level one. Recently added books and magazines, heading level three, link. A list of books and magazines added in the most popular books, heading level three, link. There's a most popular book section here. It's much easier to navigate the one in the get books section and it is to go into the uh the uh, bard web page and then go to the popular book section here it's just because this is the universal web page it's got everything in it i'm going to keep flicking to the right a list of the most downloaded books in the last 30 days fine books heading level two all right we've got a heading here for fine books but it's just a heading which tells me that what comes next is about finding a book this itself is not a button or the find books button so i'm going to keep going flick to the right Search the collection text field. Ah, I've got a text field that says search the collection. That means I know I can type something in here. So I'm going to do a one finger double tap. Well, if you're low vision, just touch that little text box. Insertion point at end. And I've got myself a text field I can type in. Now this is the search the collection. It searches for whatever I type in. Uh, it searches it in a way uh, that... Um, uh, uh, it, it covers the author's name, the book title, uh, the description, uh, even the category. So if I type something a uh, little, like, like if I try to think uh, I want Stephen King books and I just type the word King in here, I'm going to get every single, I'm going to get Stephen Hawking. I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to get the Stephen King books. I'm also going to get every book that's about a King. Uh, so not exactly what we want. Uh, what we want to do is we want to type in something as specific as possible. Uh, and we, if it's a series name, put the whole series name. Know that if it's a generic sounding series, it's, you might be better off doing the author. 
Also for typing in here, know that everything is sorted. Uh, many things are sorted by last name, first name. So last name, comma, first name. It's not a bad way to search for something. I'm going to throw in a little bit of a softball here, and we're going to search to find the Harry Potter books here. So uh, I could use the on-screen keyboard to type. I'm going to use the dictation on here. So if you're low vision, know that that's the button. To, uh, it's a button either in the bottom right corner or directly to the left of the space bar. It depends on your phone. Or if you're using voiceover, you're going to use my, 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 favorite, uh, my favorite gesture that we talked about last time, the two-finger double tap. Since the keyboard's open, open and something is, uh, there's a text field that's editing, that'll dictate. Harry Potter. So I did a two finger double tap and I put in Harry Potter. Now, because I've got my phone plugged in audio wise and it's switching back and forth, it did cut itself off, but your voiceover should say inserted Harry Potter. Uh, now uh, I can flick to the right go button and there's a go button or in the bottom right corner of the keyboard there's a search button and then we're going to select that so in this case with go and voiceover i'm going to double tap go so now it's searching uh, we're going to have to be a little bit patient sometimes but the go button gets hit but we don't hear zero in the book number it. and zero in the narrator ah it's up and it has got the results you notice it seemed to start in the middle that's something that I've been running into with the, uh, with the latest version. Um, so I want to start at the top and four finger tap. Get books, back button. And I'm going to flick to the right and let's listen to what I got. Barred, heading, backward, button, one of forward, dimmed, button, guard books containing keyword, Harry Potter, heading level one. All right, I've got a heading that's uh, very good. It says books containing Harry Potter. I know I've done it correctly. I'm going to keep flicking to the right. Displaying items 1 through 113 of 113. Oh, well, we got 113 results. Start over. Link. I'm going to keep going here. Book series. Heading level 1. So it didn't acknowledge that this might be part of a book series. I'm going to flick to the right. Harry Potter series. 49. Link. Harry Potter. 32. Link. Oh, and I've got a link right here for the Harry Potter series. I'm going to do a one-finger double tap because that is correct. Harry Potter. 32. Link. Rolling. J. K, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone TV 92,000. So it's jumped me now uh, to the series section. If I kept going, you would have also heard things like uh, results in author's name, results in title, uh, results in series. So if I typed in an author's name, I flip to the right till I hear results in author, I go, that sounds right. One finger double tap, it jumps me to the author results. Um, you can just keep going and you will get the results all listed out, but I find those links particularly helpful to get to what I was searching for. So I've got Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone here. Uh, and if we have any British listeners, that's the same as Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Uh, I'm going to uh, confirm it's the right book by continuing the flick to the right. Rolling J. K. Read by Jim Dale. A product school fiction. Fantasy fiction. On Harry Potter's 11th birthday, he learns that I hear more information about the book, how long it is, who's the author, who read it. If I keep going. Add to my wish list, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, link. Uh, I can get to a link that says add to wish list. You'll notice there's no download button, uh, unlike what we found uh, when we were searching for most popular books, for example. When we search the Bard uh, webpage, we actually have to add books to the wish list. The wish list is a place to store books that you want to download at some point. Uh, this is a great way to, I might go through and download uh, and add all books uh, from a series to my wish list, but then only download the most recent one or the one I want to listen to. Uh, that'll keep them in a nice, easy to get to list. Uh, so I'm going to add this to my wish list. One finger double tap. Add to my wish list. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Link. Tab bar. Selected. Get books. Tab. Two of four. All right, so I've added that to my list. It loaded up a new page, and you'll notice it ended up on the Get Books button again. It was just something I'm repeating over and over again. Sometimes when it loads in a new page, voiceover's focus doesn't go to the top, so we just do a four-finger tap at the top. Get Books, back and button. And begin flicking to the right. That'll reorientate us in case that uh, we don't end up in the right spot. I notice it doesn't happen all the time. Sometimes it pops me directly to the right spot. Sometimes I have to do this frequently. It's just a, it's a little bit of a workaround we got to deal with. So I'm going to flick to the right and let's listen. Bard, heading, 
backward button, one of two, forward, dimmed button, book Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone successfully added to wish list, heading level two. Ah, so it's been added to my wish list. That's my nice confirmation here. And there's more options here, like I can go to the wish list and see what's there, or go back to the Bard main page. Go to wish list, link, back to Bard main page, link. Double tap on that, and then I can repeat my process. I can search for uh, a new book and add that to the wish list. If I want to get back to my results, like I don't want it to go back to the main page, find the search, search, uh, the search library button, type in a new thing and find it again. If I noticed earlier, there was a, if I flick to the left, go to wish list, book Harry Potter and forward, dip backward button, one of two. There's a backward button. That will take me back to the previous page. That was the result for my Harry Potter search. So I could use that to go back uh, and then get the next book in the series and the next book in the series, et cetera. Um, uh, there's a couple of different techniques for doing that, but uh, we've got a book added uh, to our wish list. We now want to download it so we can add it to our bookshelf. And then we'll talk about how to actually listen to some of these books. So if I want to uh, get back to that wish list, I want to get back to the main get book section. So we could go to the tab bar. I could do a four finger tap on the bottom, flick to the left to get books and double tap. That'll put me back there. I still love my two finger scrub personally. So I'm going to do that. Bard website. That takes me back to the get book sections back on the Bard website button. And that two finger scrub, uh, if anybody's wondering, want a little bit more details with that, that's taking two fingers and drawing your fingers back and forth across the screen. I've heard a lot of people instructed as taking two fingers and making the, a Z shape, almost like you're finger painting uh, the letter Z, for example. Although you don't have to go up and down. I think of it more like taking two fingers and rubbing something on, uh, that's on the screen. Like uh, let's say we were trying to clean the screen. We would take a cloth and you would rub it back and forth with some pressure. Uh, it's just that with two fingers back and forth. Uh, and that is the universal go back gesture. It's just like with the two finger double tap, it's one of my favorites. Okay, enough with that. We want to go to the wish list. So we navigate to the get book section and we'll find wish list is one of the first options. So I'm going to jump to the top here, four finger tap on the get books tap, heading. Flick to the right. Wish list. There's my wish list. I'm going to open that up. Wish list. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Rolling J. K. Audio. Total time eight hours, 35 minutes. All right, I've got all the books I've added to my wish list here. Whether I added them on a computer by visiting the web page or whether or not I did it uh, by going to the get books sections and going to the Bard web page this way. Uh, when I'm ready to download this book, I'm going to do a one finger double tap or just visually just tap on the book. Alert, confirmation. It'll ask me if I'm sure. I'm gonna, I'll get a notification. There's an okay button. So I'm just gonna flick to the right to get to it. Would you like to download this title? Cancel button. Okay, button. And I would like to download this one. One finger double tap. Get books, back button. And that book will start down. <coughs> so, get books, just to recap. In the get books section, we can quickly browse through uh, the recently added to the library, the most popular books, and also a list of all the magazines that are available. If we do the popular books or the new books. Uh, when we navigate through, we can double tap to quickly, uh, we, when we find a book, we can use the actions, flick up and flick down to either download that book, add it to the wish list, or see other books that are similar. If we're looking for a specific books, then in the get book section, we go to the Bard web page. We flick to the right or navigate to the search, uh, uh, search library. We type in what we'd like to search for being as specific as we can. And we get the results. We can flick through the results. Oh, doorbell ring. That means that book's done downloading. Um, we can flick to the uh, right uh, until we hear the book title, hear the description and add it to the wish list. We add as many books we want to the wish list. Then we go back to the get book section, go to the wish list section, find the book we want and double tap to download it. So I find browsing the recent books is, is a lot smoother, but oftentimes we are looking for a specific book. So it does take a couple of steps, but it's, uh, it's well worth it because there are hundreds of thousands of great audiobooks. So we've got the books loaded on the phone. I want to play them. So 
we're going to then navigate to a new section, the bookshelf section. It's part of the tabs at the bottom. It's the bottom left. So you can touch the bottom left corner of the screen where you can do my four finger tap at the bottom. Tab bar. Now reading tab four or four. Put you in the tab bar, flip to the left. Settings tab selected. Get books tab bookshelf tab one of four. And double tap there. Audiobooks three heading. And you don't have to do it with the four fingers. If you're really good at the spatial or you have enough vision to under to see the basic interface, you can just touch that bookshelf at the bottom, right? I've got another friend who's totally blind. She's really fast at finding those buttons. Uh, it's just when, when, I, when I turn my screen curtain on, uh, I like the four finger on the left and right. It's just my preferred way to navigate. There's no wrong way. So I'm in the bookshelf section here. And on the screen is the list of our books. I can flick to the right to start reading through them. You're going to hear some ways of organizing them by title, by author, or by latest. Um, if you have a lot of books, these can be useful. But if you only get a handful, then I would just say flick to the right past those. Edit button. Toolbar. Title and author search. Search field. Toolbar. Select author button. Two latest button. Three more info. 1980. Bad luck and truck. More info. 1984. A novel. Orwell. So I've got uh, 1984 on there. 1984. Uh, which I thought would be a, a good one to demo. Uh, it seems like a technology relevant one. Uh, and I've got the other books. If I flick to the right, I can keep. Uh, I'll keep More it. info. Bad luck and trouble. A Jack Reacher. There's that Jack Reacher novel. To More right. info. Bad luck. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Ro and there's my, my third book. So I want to actually play one of these. I'm going to go back to that 1984, flicking to the left. More info, bad, bad luck and trouble. More info, 19, 1984, a novel. Or well. When I hear the title of the book that I want, I can just double tap to start playing or load it into the now reading section. Uh, if I want to remove it or uh, from this library, I can, there's more actions. I can do the flick up until I hear delete and double tap, just like I would in the Apple Mail app, for example, delete an email from there or I delete a conversation in messages. It's very similar layout. So I'm gonna double tap on this 1984. 1984, a novel heading. And it loads it into the player. So the player is uh, visually a copy of one of these physical players. It's got a play button, a fast forward, a rewind, and some navigation options as well. I can flick to the right to start to navigate through those, and we will. Uh, but if you want to just start playing the book, we're going to use we're going to use that magic tap again. The two finger double tap will act now as a play and pause. Uh, I'm going to uh, unplug my iPhone from the computer so you can hear this better. We're striking 13. Winston Smith, his chin nuzzled into his breast in an effort to escape the vile wind, slipped quickly through the glass doors of Victory Mansion. So I just did another two-figure double tap to pause that. So once we've selected a book, uh, we can just do the two-figure double tap to play and pause that book. Or visually, there's a big green play button in the center. You can drag around with your finger and find those buttons. Or if I flick to the right. Navigation button. One, chapter. Current time, 54 minutes, 59. Current position, 6%. And sleep timer, but bookmark. Previous, jump by chapter. Next button. You'll hear some other buttons like sleep timer, uh, uh, forward and uh, jump next button. Next button that will jump me to the next chapter in this case because you heard earlier it said jump by chapter button. Jump by chapter. Next button. And if I keep going, rewind button, play button. We'll find there's a play button and I can do a one finger double tap to start playing that. That's why I like the two finger double tap so much faster to get to. Um, and then I've got my, my navigation methods. Now, if we leave this app, uh, we come back the next day, uh, we open up the Bard mobile app, uh, we can navigate to that tab bar and straight to the now reading section. Uh, we don't have to go to the bookshelf and choose our book again. It keeps that book in the player, in the now reading section of the tabs. So I can get back to that book anytime I want to. Uh, and it will remember exactly where I left off. Uh, so that's how I get into and, uh, and play back the book. Now, if you do have a situation where you need to go back, uh, if you're like me, and I sometimes have a tendency to fall asleep while an audiobook is playing at the end of the day, 
or uh, uh, you uh, someone else starts playing it, or it just loses. You just lose your spot for some reason. Uh, near the top of the now reading section, I'm going to jump to the top here. Recently read button. Airplay 19 navigation button. There's a navigation button. You'll find it in the very top right corner. If I double tap on that. Navigation. Selected. One plus. Uh, one. It'll bring up the navigation for this book, which will break it up by chapter, sometimes uh, by section. Depends on the book itself here. And you can flick to the right. One plus. Two. One plus. Three. Selected. One plus. Nineteen. Alert. Fail to decode the audio file. Oh, now I'm having a little bit of an audio problem here. Let me try something. Recently read. Alert. Okay. Button. So I have a little problem with this one. I tried jumping ahead in a section. I could actually probably go back to the get books. I mean, I'd get the bookshelf, delete the book and re-download it. I don't usually have that type of problem. Uh, I get, I've read through a lot of books this way, but uh, you do have that navigation button there. The top right corner lets you jump into different sections uh, of the book. Um, so that's a really broad kind of screen reader overview of the Bard mobile app. Free download in the app store, you do have to qualify for services. You have to, you have to sign up for services uh, through your various states. Uh, but uh, it is a huge wealth of, uh, of audio books. Uh, many of them read uh, by some amazing volunteers, wonderful readers out there. Uh, and they do have uh, a lot of the really, really popular books uh, as well. Uh, and just also know, like I mentioned earlier, uh, you can also browse through uh, their web page on a computer and add things to the wish list. If you find that's a more natural way of navigating uh, than using purely on the phone. Um, it's especially handy if you don't have a physical keyboard and you find typing on the iPhone a bit of a challenge. And a lot of people do. Um, so that's a, that's a really broad overview uh, of, uh, of Bard Mobile and a demonstration on how to uh, navigate and find, uh, find books. Uh, so with that, we're going to transition over uh, into our Siri section. I told you that was going to be a long one. We went about 40 minutes on that demo. So hopefully everyone is still awake for me here. <laughs> uh, let's talk a little bit about Siri here. Uh, so I'm going to do my little introduction here. So. I mentioned that we are going to be looking at the ways that Siri can look up business information. This is very simple uh, and easy to do, uh, but it's full of things you might not have known you could ask Siri to do. Uh, many of these exact same questions, with the exception of the ones that mention a service called Yelp, uh, will work exactly the same on any of your Google or of your um, Amazon devices whose names start with the letter A, who I'm not going to say just in case you've got me on speakerphone. Um, many of them can do these exact same ones. So we're, so we're using Siri as an example, but if there's any of these commands that don't work on those other players, I will mention it before, uh, after, we, after we use them here. But feel free to try these out. So you might know that you can, uh, that the iPhone has a Maps app built into it that's used for finding businesses around you. Uh, now, that particular app is a bit of a challenge to use with voiceover. There's some cool things in there we can still use with it. And we can, the turn-by-turn -turn directions and walking directions uh, do work well with our screen readers as well. Uh, but um, there, because we've got that Maps app built in, there's certain questions and information we can get from Siri. Now I'm going to be activating Siri on my phone here using the side button. I've got one of these phones without a home button in it. So I hold on the side button to activate Siri. I'm not going to be using her target phrase, hey Siri, uh, just so I don't set off any of your devices. I also have got other devices around that set off. So I'm going to use it that way and I'm going to have voiceover on. If you're low vision and you want to use these same things, you're going to want to use the hey Siri feature. Uh, otherwise, uh, she's not going to read back the results. She's going to display the results. Um, so um, you can also go into Siri settings and, and change how verbose she is. But we're going to be doing with voiceover on. Uh, just know that if you're not a voiceover user, if you use the Hey Siri feature, you'll get the exact same results. So you don't have to change a single setting on your phone. Okay, so first of all, 
Uh, I can ask Siri about business hours. She actually has a very big catalog of business, of what time businesses open and close. And these numbers also adjust uh, for seasonal changes. So as we approach the holiday seasons, the our Black Friday is coming up and, uh, uh, and, and those hours tend to change. Um, this will update as well. Um, although occasionally it has been off. So if you're ever unsure, you know, still not a bad idea to call. So let me give you an example. Uh, what time is Target open till? Oh, all right, I'm running into a little problem here. Hold on. What time is Target open till? All right, so I'm a little bit of a problem here. So we're gonna do a little bit of a troubleshooting here together. So uh, I mentioned earlier that um, there is a button in Siri that I'm wondering if, um, oh, now I know a, uh, a exactly what's going on. Uh, and let me explain myself here. So uh, I mentioned there was a setting in Siri. We just got the iOS 14 update uh, on, uh, on this phone here. And uh, part of iOS 14, there were some changes to Siri. Now, messages. what is going on right now for me is that I have my phone silenced. There is a silence flip on the side of the phone. And it, I've got that set on. And by default, even when voiceover is turned on, if I've got the phone silenced, then Siri is quiet. She's not coming back. Uh, with a result because the phone is silenced. So if I unmute. unmute my phone and say, what time is Target open till? One option is Target on Vinewood Lane North. Do you want that one? Yes. Target on Vinewood Lane North is open today from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. So I had to unsilence my phone in order to get Siri to speak. If you've done the iOS update and you're a voiceover user and you're using that button on the side and you expect her to respond, much like I just did, know that you have to unmute your phone. But what if you don't want to unmute your phone, right? You, want the, you don't want the phone ringer to go off, so that's why you've got it muted. But you do want Siri to be able to speak back. So if I go into the voiceover, I mean, the Siri settings, I'm going to activate voiceover for this and say, open Siri settings. They always say time change. Oh, there we go. Settings. Uh, and if I navigate through here, there's a section called Siri responses. I'm going to flip to the right to it. Siri, ask Siri, head, listen for Hey Siri, press I button for Siri, allow Siri when locked, language, English, Siri voice, Siri responses button. There's a Siri responses button. I'm going to double tap on spoken that. Spoken responses, heading. And I've got a section called spoken responses. So that is when Siri is responded, should she speak? or should it display what's on the screen here? So I'm gonna to flick to the right. Always. There's an always option, flick to the right again. Selected, when silent mode is off. Mine was sent to when silent mode is off, which meant that silent mode is on, Siri's gonna be quiet. I'm gonna to flick to the left. Always. And I'm gonna double tap on always, because I do want those spoken responses. Selected, always. Now I don't have to worry about whether or not my phone is muted or unmuted. This is only an iOS 14 issue, uh, but uh, that's the way that we can resolve it. Unmute the phone, or if we don't wanna have to worry about that, go into the Siri settings, go to Siri responses and turn it to always. So, well, that's the glory of these responses, of, of, of these demos. We find these little things together. All right, so I just asked Siri earlier, right before I ran into that trouble, what time is Target open till? and it can give me the hours. I can ask for what time are they open to on Tuesday, and she'll give me that day's hours. I can open to one and open till tonight. I can get the actual hours. When do they open? Tomorrow morning would also work. Uh, now, I did mention that what if, you know, we know it's a special holiday, we want to know for sure that the hours are right. Sometimes these databases can be wrong. So I can also get the phone number for a business. What is the phone number for Cub Foods? One possibility I see is Cub Foods on Vicksburg Lane North. 
Is that the one you're looking for? Yes. The phone number for Cub Foods is plus one seven six three five five nine two one one zero. Would you like to call it? No. Okay. Uh, I can also get ratings for businesses. Uh, Siri has an integration into Yelp, which is a uh, crowdsourced review service uh, where people can write reviews for different businesses. What is Target's Yelp rating? One possibility is Target on Vinewood Lane North. Is that the one you want? Yes. Target gets 3.5 stars. So it's out of five stars. Some people find this to be useful if they're trying to find a well-rated business. Uh, I've noticed that people on Yelp tend to be particularly harsh. So I, I try to keep that in mind when I look at the, at, at the star rating. Uh, but I simply ask it, how are they, how are they rated on Yelp? Uh, also, if I'm looking at um, restaurants or, or, or places I might eat, I can get an idea about how expensive they are. How expensive is brick and bourbon? Brick and bourbon is considered moderately priced on Yelp. Uh, so it's only got a four, right? So there's a low price, moderate, um, uh, uh, medium and high and, and high. So she won't give me like exact numbers, but she'll give me an idea whether or not it's an expensive or inexpensive or moderately priced uh, business before I go there. Um, now, even though uh, we know that we can get driving directions, I can say, give me driving directions to a place and it will offer to give me turn by turn directions. Maybe I just want to know how long it's going to take me to get somewhere. I can ask that question. How long would it take me to drive to the Minneapolis Convention Center? Traffic to Minneapolis Convention Center is light, so it should take 23 minutes via State Highway 55 East. All right, but what if I'm not driving, right? I'm going to hop on the bus. How long would it take me to get to Minneapolis Convention Center by bus? I can't read the traffic report at the moment. However, it might take one hour and 15 minutes to reach Minneapolis Convention Center. Now I could also ask her to give me transit directions or bus directions and much like driving or walking, it'll start taking me through that process. But this is a good way for me to find out uh, before I decide if I'm gonna leave. How long is it gonna take me to get there? I could also say, how long would it take me to walk to a particular business as well? Uh, and then if I'm searching for businesses, uh, I can also be more specific. It's inter uh, I can say, what Chinese restaurants are nearby? Selected, nope. always. What Chinese restaurants are nearby? Selected, always. <laughs> well, Siri's giving me a little bit more trouble here. Let's try the next one just to see if that, uh, if, if she figures it out. Um, Absolutely true. I'm just gonna get out of off messages. Get out of that uh, that settings just in case that's throwing me off. What inexpensive pizza places are nearby? Messages. Well, Siri's now apparently I've upset uh, I've upset the Siri gods here and uh, not responding to me here. So I'm going to voice over off. Try it without voiceover just just to make sure that's not a problem. What inexpensive pizzas are nearby? Oh, pizza places. Okay, here's what I found. Interesting here. So I'm gonna turn my voiceover back on again. Voiceover on, message. What Chinese restaurants are nearby? Messages. Well, I'm not gonna struggle with this, with this too much more here, but I'm having some sort of problem with Siri. If this is the case, what I normally would do, I tried flipping voiceover on and off just to make sure that wasn't a particular problem. Uh, uh, she's, uh, when I did turn it off, she did behave like she was gonna give me the right information, but she wasn't displaying the right information on the screen here. So what I would normally do in this case, and in fact is what I'm gonna do, because my next demo is gonna talk about uh, the phone a little bit, is I'm just gonna restart the phone, the universal IT solution, turning it off and turning it back on again. So I'm going to restart my phone. Now I've got one of those phones, um, no, which is not just, a, it does not have a home button. So you actually hold the volume and the side button until it says Call, slide to power off. Slide to power off. Even though it says slide the power off, I do a one finger double tap and then I'll turn off my phone there. I'm going to count to five and then turn it back on again. Uh, but at that point, we're going to transition into the next 
sec. We'll do one more test. We'll transition into the next section here. Uh, so what I'm going to restart the other examples I, were gonna, I was going to give is, is there a particular type of restaurant? Chinese, Mexi Chinese Mexican, Italian, American. Uh, I could ask uh, about particular type of restaurants. And then I can also ask for an inexpensive Chinese restaurant or a expensive Italian restaurant. If I want something fancy, for, exa for example. I can also find out if the place does reservations. Of course, we're in a situation right now where everything's takeout pretty much and, uh, uh, and curbside. But uh, you could ask if a place has reservations, for example, and say, I want an expensive Italian place with reservations. And it'll search for those specific type of businesses. So my phone just restarted here. Voiceover, of course, still on. When iPhone restarts, passcode field, zero of voiceover off. Now I turn voiceover off for putting in my passcode, not because I can't do it without voiceover. It's just I don't want my passcode announced to all of you. <laughs> I mean, you're all saying like nice people, but it's not a good idea to share your passwords if you don't absolutely have to. Uh, and then turn on voiceover. I'm using Siri to turn okay. voiceover back on again. I turn voiceover on. What Chinese restaurants are nearby? messages. And she's going to give me trouble here. Okay, well, we're going to move on for the time for the time being, but I have to assure you that that does work. And of course, about five minutes before we before we started, I demoed it and everything was working fine here. It might be uh, there was an issue just so you know that sometimes it's not it's not you or your device. There was an issue uh, about a month and a half back, I believe it is now, where Siri lost the ability to get sports scores. You should be able to ask and say, you know, well, how did the Vikings do last night? Or um, uh, you could ask about a specific sports player. I'm running into a, a problem is I don't, I don't follow a lot of sports and I don't know a lot of players. But you could get specific stats, games, schedules, and all of a sudden Siri wouldn't do it. When you ask for it, she either say, uh, try again later. Or in some cases, she say, here's what I found on the web and get you a bunch of web results. Well, that problem wasn't your phone if you ran into that. And it wasn't, uh, it, it wasn't uh, anything that you could have done to fix it. The issue was that Siri loads in through these databases online. That's where she gets all of her information. It's not on your phone, naturally. She's got to look it up somewhere. And Apple built up relationships with various uh, uh, providers who store that information. And then Siri goes and gets it from their database and presents that information in a nice, orderly manner for you. And what happened was the servers or the service that it gets their sports scores from stopped working. And Siri didn't know what to do. She couldn't get the results. And so you'd either get an error, wouldn't respond, or in some cases would just tell you to search the web instead. So if that's the case, sometimes the only thing we can do is try again later. Give it an hour, have it try again. It is a reason why and a compelling reason why it's good to learn how to use some of these apps on their own. Know how to use the web so you could search that information because that's less likely to go down than Siri. But that's just the way it is sometimes. So in this case, because I restarted the phone and the problem's still there, this is a time where I would just wait 30 minutes and try again and sometimes it'll resolve itself. But we're not gonna wait though, we're not gonna sit here and wait 30 minutes. We're gonna move on to our next topic which is podcasts. All right, so I wanted to give a, uh, a short beginning introduction to the concept of podcasts for some of you that uh, maybe haven't worked with or don't exactly know where they are or where they came from. And then through this series, we're going to go in deep and, and learn about subscribing and getting access to them. But first, I don't know, what, what is a podcast? Where did that word come from? So way, way back before we had iPhones, we had iPods. I've actually got one with me right here. It's uh, one of the uh, third or fourth generation uh, iPods. Uh, used to plug this into your computer, load it with 20, it's got 20 gigs. It's like 100,000 songs that we can load. It had a fun little men, uh, click wheel that we would spin and some buttons. And they did add a screen reader to it, although it wasn't with it the, when they originally launched it. So it would actually move through, the, you could actually get through the menus. I actually know a couple blind people before they had a screen reader, uh, they would memorize all the, uh, they would memorize all the menus because it makes a clicking sound as you wheel, click, 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 click. And they would count the clicks. 
Luckily, they did eventually put a screen reader into it. And that's eventually how we ended up with one on the phone as well. I digress. Um, Podcasts were originally audio recordings people would make on the internet that people would download and put on their iPods. They um, They would be recordings and they could be made by anybody. Sometimes they would be made by uh, public radio, for example, radio shows or talk shows that would record themselves. You could download it from their webpage, load it on your music player and listen to it when you're commuting, for example. Um, These started originally not with shows that were broadcast. These were individuals, people who would record and put them out and anybody could do it. It was literally a way of kind of semi-broadcasting without having to have a broadcaster's license. And of course, everyone who used it would have to get it over the internet. To an extent, that's all still true, except now we can get the, these devices directly, uh, these audio recordings directly on our devices, like our iPhones and our iPads. We don't have to go through a computer anymore. These, they've also become significantly more popular. There are hundreds of thousands of podcasts. There's a whole joke that if you're in, uh, if you're in California uh, and you're trying to get into the, uh, into the uh, comedy career, for example, every single comedian's got a podcast. You'll find it from every single person. And there are these giant indexes. Apple runs the biggest one uh, of different podcasts. So I want to start my own podcast series. In fact, I actually had one for a while called the Access Ninja Podcast that I did with, a, with an, uh, an ex-coworker. And we would sit down and we would record about an hour and we would discuss different accessibility topics. And this was a while beyond just low vision and blindness back then. We'd record that and then we would post it onto uh, a web page, which is uh, access. Uh, Ninja is the the web address for that. We actually still have it up, although it hasn't been updated in about a year and a half. Uh, You could go there and download those episodes, but uh, to make it easier, we submitted that to a giant database that Apple keeps, the Apple Podcasting Database. Google keeps one as well. And that way on your iPhone or on your device, uh, on your Android device, you could open up the podcast app and search and find the Access Ninja podcast and listen to it. So I mentioned that some of these are made by small uh, independent groups. Some of them are financed and supported by advertisements. And some of them are produced by big companies uh, or broadcast companies like public radio, for example. One of the things that makes podcasts unique is for the most part, they're all free. And they are supported usually by advertisements. And so usually the person might read a small advertisement or two throughout the podcast. Now it's changing now. There's, we're getting these podcast networks and there's these places you can subscribe to them. But for the most part, 99% of all podcasts are free and can be found on any computer or smartphone device. So I've got some examples for you. Uh, For instance, two interesting low vision and blindness podcasts that would be of interest to people who are attending uh, a presentation like this one here. Uh, There is a great podcast series called Blind Abilities, and they cover all types of technology and uh, uh, people, blind people in the workplace. Uh, They also have tutorials that they do, uh, similar to the ones that we're doing today. Uh, It's a rather uh, fun uh, podcast. Uh, Another one that specializes in the iPhones and iPads and some of the Mac computers as well is one called Apple Viz. Apple V-I-S is another podcast. Um, And I, uh, which I I enjoy both of those. I also have a variety of podcasts that I I listen to that are uh, some of them are more informative and some of them are more funny. Uh, I like a particular podcast called the Planet Money Podcast. That's done by Uh, National Public Radio, and it's an economics podcast. And I'll tell you, I don't really know much of anything about economics, uh, just uh, just enough to get by, Uh, but they cover some fascinating topics and they do it in a way that you don't have to know anything uh, about uh, about that topic to enjoy. And it's rather entertaining. I also enjoy a very lighthearted, but also informative podcast called Secretly Incredibly Fascinating. Uh, And this is from a comedian uh, who uh, is uh, a rather rather success rather successful um, 
in uh, in more intellectual uh, uh, tasks. He was on uh, he was a champion on Jeopardy, for example, and he loves facts that are amazing. He thinks the world's a very interesting place, especially if you look closely at it. So secretly, incredibly fascinating covers a, an individual topic. Uh, that seemingly shouldn't be interesting, and they make it so and explain it. So they had one recently on um, uh, on ham, uh, the history of ham. Uh, they did uh, an, another one uh, recently on um, uh, uh, oh, now see, now I can't remember. All of a sudden, uh, they did one on alarms, like sirens and where they come from and the science behind them and why they have to keep changing them because people learn to ignore sirens if they hear them over and over again. Uh, so very interesting podcast. So we're going to, in uh, future episodes, we're going to show you how to use the podcast app on the iPhone, uh, which is conversely very similar to the one available on uh, Android as well. Uh, both uh, Android and the uh, iPhone come with built-in ones, but there's also additional podcasting apps. Now they all pull from the same pool, uh, but they just have different features. So someone will actually play back the podcasts at a higher rate or faster uh, for people who can process uh, auditory information really quickly. And it's not my preferred method, but I some people who love so many podcasts, they can't listen to them all. So they listen to them at 125% uh, speed. You can do that. So I've told you a little bit about podcasts, but maybe you're curious, you want to try one out, but you don't want to have to learn uh, all the screen reader, uh, navigation, so forth. Well, the good news is if you've got a device uh, that has a, a, a smart assistant in it, like a Amazon device or, a, or an iPhone or a Google, uh, you can actually... Five, six, one, eight, zero, plus one, five, six, one, eight, getting a zero, phone call, five, apparently. Two, two. Sorry about that. Um, so if you have a, um, if you have one of these smart devices, you can usually ask it to play the latest episode of any particular podcast, if you know it by name. So for instance, I mentioned the Blind Abilities podcast. You wanna give that a try. Uh, you would activate your voice assistant and say, play the latest episode of Blind Abilities. Okay, here's the newest episode of Blind Abilities. Tech abilities, girl, 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 oh boy, big sir control center, magnifier people detection, PC versus Mac fight, stitch fixed accessible shopping, and Google Photos app storage is going to cost ya. And it isn't that I found the touch bar. Uh, I'm going to stop it up here. Stop it for a moment there. That really long series of things, that was the name of the episode. They name each episode like a sense or two of the topics they're covering. So that was just a list of what's in that episode here. I did the two finger double tap to pause it, but. Um, but it'll just start pl playing that episode. I'll play a little bit more of it. Or something that was difficult to use. I, you know, it was workable. Phone notification. So um, that's going to actually just start playing the latest episode. And if you want to, it's not a subscription. Uh, I just play that episode, loads it, and that's it. So I could... Uh, so I could just ask my device, hey, play the Blind Abilities podcast, play the Apple Viz podcast, play, uh, I'm sorry, play the latest episode of the Blind Abilities podcast. And that particular voice command will work on almost any voice assistant. So play the latest episode of the Planet Money podcast, play the latest episode of Secretly Incredibly Fascinating. Um, and it will just start playing it. So if you're curious about the podcast and you've heard about one, that's a great way to start. Uh, just ask your voice assistant to do so and then tell it to stop when you are done. Now, next time we meet, I'm going to actually show you how to go into the app and we will talk about exploring and browsing for podcasts. Also, if you don't have a smart device, an iPad or a voice assistant, you're just using a computer, all of these podcasts are available through the web. Uh, you do have to search because each of these has their own web page apple you go to applevis.com and they have a link where you can listen right in the browser so does blind abilities so does planet money so the apps and the voice assistants just make it easier to get to it uh, so that is an overview or an introduction i should say of podcasts and like i said we're going to go in and talk about it much more in much more details uh next time speaking of next time uh, we are coming up on Thanksgiving, 
And I hope everybody's uh, staying safe and is going to have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, because of that, we're, um, usually we've been pushing these out every other week. We push out a little bit uh, farther uh, this time. So it's going to be a, not next week, not the week after next, but one more week after that. Give me a little bit more time to prepare and catch up with my other clients here, just so you have an expectation of the time. Uh, so with that, uh, we're going to transition back over into our Q&A section here. So anybody who's attending uh, via our Zoom channel, uh, if you want to uh, unmute yourselves and you have a particular question about anything we talked about uh, or just a general question you think might be interested, interesting to the group, uh, I invite you to go ahead and, and, uh, and ask. Jonathan, uh, this yes. is Paul Gasner speaking here. Hey, Paul. Um, how are you? Um, back to Bard a little bit. Yes. Uh, I'm one of those people who searches on my la on my desktop and then adds to wish list and then loads it on my phone. But when I do the search mechanism, quite often when I put in the search item, I'll get like 600 possibilities. What what am I not doing? How, am, uh, uh, do I have to, uh, and I try to be specific, um, uh, but, but sometimes there might be a word like the latest and you get everything with the word the or whatever. Do you have an, any, any thought about that? Yeah, that's a really good question, especially there's some, some books and some authors particularly hard to find because of this. Um, there is a couple strategies you can do to try to make it a little bit better. Uh, so you mentioned you mentioned a very very important point here. Is you mentioned you you put you put like a, uh, let's say you're looking up the king's speech, right? And you type in the king's speech, and then it hits a bunch of results that have the word the in it. And you're like, well, that's obviously not what I want. It's got the in it. Like, do I get like a thousand options here? Um, and that's because it's when you type in something like that, it's typing each word individually, then it's trying to match them all up, and um, and the search engine's not that advanced. It's not like Google's built-in search engine, which is very advanced and can kind of filter and figure some of these things out. So uh, there is a couple of tricks when you're doing a search like this uh, that can help out quite a bit. So let me go back to the, the King's speech being an example here. And the fact that it's getting the all the time. But if I put in King's speech, I get a ton of books, once again, that have Kings in them, for example. Um, still way too big of a net that I've drawn. So there's two things we would do. One is a little trick, and you can do this in any search engine, is we put, uh, if there's a series of words and we want to match that exactly right, we can put it in quotation marks in that search. So what we do is we put quote, the space kings slash speech, end quote. And then when we do that search, it says, I only want results that have all three of those words together just like that, the king speech. So it won't just search for king, it won't just search for speech, and it won't just search for the, it needs all three in a row. So this could be particularly good if you've got a title that you're looking for. Um, just kind of like narrow it down. You say it has to be all three in a row. Uh, the other thing you can do uh, to, a, uh, to a lesser extent is when you search, and this is the same as on the, on the web one, is if you search the King's speech at the top of the page, you get those links, results by title, results by author. And if you go results by title, because it's the title you're typing in, that also kind of filters those results down. That's a little bit less effective when it's picking up the. So my best uh, advice would be try putting, um, putting the phrase or series of words that you know belong together in quotation marks. I think that'll cut down the results significantly. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the great way. The same, you, and like I said, the same thing if you're on Google and you search for something and you're getting wild results that are unconnected, putting it in quotation marks also helps. Uh, there as well. I, I don't find I need it. It's used, I used to have to do that all the time in Google like 10 years ago, but not as much anymore. It's, the engine's pretty smart. And the same thing with all the search engines. If you don't like Google, Bing, DuckDuckGo, it's all the same. They're the same, put it in quotation marks to narrow down the results. The category that says by collection, what would that mean? Uh, so, um, 
by collection. Uh, you, you know, I'm actually, off the top of my head, I'm actually not sure. I might have to look that, I might have to explore that a little bit more. I know that they've got, um, there's series, which we know what that means, but collection, yeah, collection, I, I, collection I'm not sure about. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head. Good, that's a very good question. Yeah, well, maybe I have that wrong too. I'm not sure, but. Because I know there's by series, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a collection. I think you're right. Um, uh, I know that they've got, you know, by, by genre and they've got by series. I swear I, I've seen collection in there too. So, um, well, I, you know, I'll look that up and, and, and I'll bring it up if I, if I figure it out. Jonathan, I got a question. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the mute function. Now, um, I sometimes, uh, if I have my phone plugged in charging and I've had voice on, voiceover on, uh, sometimes if there's a phone call very early and my wife isn't quite up yet or something, um, I turn off voiceover at night. But you mentioned about a mute function. So I could still have voiceover on and mute on at the same time. Uh, wasn't sure what that meant. I have an oh, yeah. iPhone 7, so it's not quite as new as yours. That's a, no, that's a really good question. So I mentioned that uh, in, in all the iPhones, every single phone, in fact, dating back to iPhone 1, has had a, uh, a mute switch on it. And so you'll find that on all the phones uh, above the volume up. So on the left-hand side of the phone, you've got a volume down, and then above that, a volume up. And then above that is a little switch. And the switch actually pushes ah. either away from the phone or towards the phone. Ah. Uh, if you pull it towards the front of the phone, so like towards yourself, that's unmuted. And if you push it in, so it's away from you, uh, that is muted. Now, um, the mute is mainly, it's for two things. Uh, one is it's for the ringer. So what the, will the ringer make noise? And if it's muted, it will usually vibrate uh, instead of uh, instead of uh, instead of ringing when you have it on. Now, it does not affect voiceover. So if voiceover is turned on, the phone is set to mute, and a call comes in, voiceover is still going to announce the caller ID. She's all going to say, oh, and call from 612-840, whatever. So it's not going to accomplish quite that goal you want uh, by putting it into mute. It's going to silence some applications uh, from making extra noises. Uh, it's going to silence the ringer, uh, but it's not going to uh, uh, stop it from announcing the caller ID. So there's two other solutions you can use. Um, one is um, if you've got, you flip it into silence mode, but you got voiceover on, you can mute the speech, which is a three finger double tap. It mutes the speech. So voiceover is still on. You, you know, because if you flick, it makes clicking noises, uh, but it turns off the voice for making an announcement. I'm not as a big a fan of this solution, but I, I do know some people who do that. Uh, so then when they wanted to speak, they pick up the phone, they do a three finger double tap, speech is back on and, um, and they can still answer it. Um, an example, a, a real world example of, of using this solution is I have a client who likes to keep his, uh, his phone actually in his front pocket uh, when he's going on a walk. And when a phone call comes through, he wants to know the call's coming through because he might choose to answer it, but he doesn't want it to announce the caller ID because uh, he's uh, on the walking trail to everybody who's out there. He just doesn't, just doesn't want the voice going off. This might be the same if you were on a bus, for example. So he'll mute the speech. I'll keep voiceover on, but he'll mute the speech. Three fingers, double tap. So it's a- uh, Notification, phone, 11 minutes ago. Notification, me, speech off. There's the speech off. And so now voiceover is still on. In fact, it'll make a clicking noise if I, but no speech. Um, and if I want it back on again, three fingers, double tap. Speech on, photos, maps. Okay. Speech off. Three finger, double tap, speech off. So when the speech is off, when a call comes through and the phone's si uh, in mute, it'll vibrate. So he knows, he's got it in his pocket. He knows a call's coming through. If he wants to answer it, he can pick up the phone and he can do his magic tap, two finger double tap, answer the phone. If he had turned voiceover off 
and the phone started to ring and he wanted to answer it, he doesn't have that two finger double tap. That's a voiceover gesture. And he's not going to be able to find that slide to unlock because he can't see the screen at all. You know, he's walking, he's going, he's out with his cane. And so that's the reason why he's like, okay, I'll turn off speech and I'll put the phone in vibrate. And if it rings, I'll know because it's vibrating and I can answer it with the two finger double tap, the answer gesture. That's a good example. Uh, but there's one more thing that you can do. Uh, that's what I, I, I do the most, which is the uh, do not disturb. Uh, so if you putting the phone on the charger and you don't want it to ring if a call comes through, you want it to be quiet, uh, you can activate Siri and say, turn on do not disturb. And when do not disturb is turned on, uh, the phone won't ring. It will send all the calls to the answering machine. And so the phone will sit there, plugged in silence. It doesn't go off at all. And in fact, that's the way I do that. Uh, when I go to sleep, I plug my phone in next to my bed. I, I turn and do not disturb and it won't ring. And then when the morning comes, I pick up the phone. I say, it's a little bit funny wording it, but I turn, I press it on. And I say, turn off, do not disturb. And now the phone calls will come through. Um, if you like that feature, there's two other ways you can adjust that too. Uh, one is if you have do not disturb on and a person calls two times in a row within two minutes, I think it is, it'll ring the second time. And the reason why is this assumes that there might be an emergency and someone's trying to call you. Because we do want, if someone's, a family member is trying to call you and you got do not disturb on because there's something terrible going on, you want to be able to get that. So they just have to, they can just call back twice and the second call will go through as long as within, I think, five minutes. Uh, the other thing you can do is, let me turn my speech back on here. Open do not disturb settings. Let's take a look at the do not disturb settings. Settings. There's a really cool feature in the do not disturb settings. So I, you can get to this by going into settings and do not disturb, or like I did, ask Siri to open for me. I'm gonna flick to the right here. Do not disturb, headache, do not disturb, off. Do not disturb, silences, calls, and not scheduled, off. There's a scheduled button. So what I can do is I can double tap on that. On. And I turn it on and now I can choose. Dimmed. Time, zero, one, zero, zero, text field. Uh, and it's got text field from and to. So I can say from, and it says. Select time, zero, one, zero, zero, text field. It's a text field, I'm gonna double tap. Time, text field is editing, zero, one, zero, zero, insertion. So what I can do is I can put in a time here. It brings up the uh, a number field I can put in, let's say nine, zero, zero, oh, nine. zero, 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 nine, zero, zero. Uh, and it's going to put in from nine o'clock and I can set to AM or PM and I can say, Hey, I want you to, uh, uh, do not disturb from 9 PM to 6 AM, for example. So if you really like the do not disturb, you can put it on a schedule. So the recap there speech, if, if you turn the silence off with that flip on the side, voiceover is still going to announce the calls. You can silence the voice with a three finger double tap. Uh, so that you can still use your two finger double tap to answer the call if it comes through because you'll hear you might hear it vibrating but it won't be as loud or you can turn on do not disturb and that'll stop it from uh, answering and if you're using it every night go to the do not disturb settings and you can set up a schedule if if you've got do not disturb and a phone call comes in uh, and obviously you don't no, it came in would you go to phone and then uh, you would see miss call or something like that yeah, that's right. So if, um, yeah, you got do not disturb on someone calls at 1am. Um, and then you pick up your phone, you and, and, and you wake it up, you hit the button, whatever, it will say notifications. Uh, and it will say missed okay. call, it will tell you if you got missed calls or a voicemail message. Uh, so you will know what happened. Um, also, if you've got do not disturb on, this is just a detail worth knowing. If you've got do not disturb on, but you're using the phone, that call will still come through. It's only if the phone's asleep. Uh, it, so it assumes if you're using the phone and do not dis and you got do not disturb on, that it probably you, you're you're there. You're willing to answer the phone call. So it's it only silences the phone calls when the phone is on the charger, not being used. Okay. And same thing I with. Forgot about 
I forgot about that mute button. I haven't used it <laughs> said for so long. I forgot that button was there. <laughs> I have mine. And this is the reason why the Siri thing threw me off because that was a new behavior that, it, that they changed. Um, is that I have mine silenced all the time. I haven't heard, I didn't, literally don't know what my ringer is set to uh, because I've got the phone in my pocket all the time. Uh, so I can feel it vibrating. And so I don't feel the need to have, uh, to have the ringer go off. So I have mine silenced all the time. So I forget it's there as well because I just have had it the same place since I bought the phone. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a pretty central feature way back when. The iPads yeah. used to have one, but they don't have them anymore. They haven't had them for years, but the iPads used to have the same switch. Jonathan, uh, another question about Bard. Yes. Uh, when you were given your explanation, um, and and uh, you were, uh, uh, I was following pretty good, and then I kind of got lost a little bit. I've never used that um, most popular book. I've never used those tabs, mm -hmm. uh, and I found that interesting. And I think you got to a point where you had, uh, you 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 happened on a Lee Child book by just by chance. And then, you, and then you said, well, here's all the books by Lee Child. So my mm -hmm. hunch is what you did is you went in uh, to the most popular, then you went to Audible Books, then you happened to find Lee Child and then went to the information to get it or? Yeah, there's two ways you I, can I do it. I lost you right about there. Yeah, yeah. So when you're in, um, when you're in the most popular books or recent books for that matter, just works the same way. Um, and you're, you're, you're flicking through and you hear, yeah, Lee Child's book. And you're like, oh, I want to know what other books they have by that author. Yeah. There's two ways you can do it. The way I did it the first time was I flicked to the right, said Lee Child's, you know, uh, 11 hours, 12 minutes, actions available. So what I did is I actually did a one finger flick down or you can go up. And it eventually said, um, books by all books by Lee Childs. And I double tapped and that brought me to the list. I got you. I got uh, you. Now I know what you now I, now I got it. Yeah. I got yeah. it. Thank you, you. Optionally, it, you can also hit the info button and then there's a more like a more infos buttons and it's also there too. But that's the way I did it. And I think that's the easiest way yep. to do Thank it. you. So, Thank you. I got it. Oh yeah, and it's great. That's a relatively new feature. Um, they, when I added it a while ago, they slipped it in there because I it didn't exist. I used to do a ton of demos on this and it never existed. I saw that, I was like, that's great. It makes the recently uh, added and it makes the uh, popular book section so much more powerful uh, because you can you can get through, you can find an entire series or find everything by an author while browsing it. I mean, I literally didn't used to do the, uh, uh, the, uh, the recently added uh, until I found out I could do that. And I was like, that's great. I love it. So, And I'm assuming the books would be arranged alphabetically versus the most recent published. Am I correct? Um, yeah. So once you, um, when you go into the most popular, for example, they're in the order that, uh, that by popularity, when you go into recent, they're in the order they were added to the library. And if you then switch to author, like you find an author name and you right. do that, look up into the author double tap, that list is alphabetical. Um, so I'll be all the books by that author in alphabetical order. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, um, we are coming up. We're just over an hour and a half, which is the length I usually like these to be. So I think we're going to wrap up for today. We had some great questions too at the end. I'm very excited about some of those. I'm very excited uh, uh, about some of those questions. Thanks for, uh, thanks for asking them. Um, like I said, we're going to uh, continue with podcasts next time, and I'm going to select two new topics based off of feedback and so another list I have, and I'll send that out to you uh, uh, hope, I'll try to get it out to you earlier next week. So I'll get that out before Thanksgiving to you. Uh, once again, you know, share these with anybody who else you think might be interested. I, I, I don't, they don't have to be from Minnesota. They can be from anywhere across, uh, uh, anywhere across America. That, that would be fine. I actually go beyond that, but uh, most of the stuff we talk about is very American focused. But, uh, and uh, otherwise, uh, everybody have a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. And, uh, and uh, 
I said, stay, stay safe and, uh, and keep, uh, keep clean with this technology. I know it could be frustrating, but uh, like today, <laughs> some of the tech demos were interesting, but uh, uh, that's why I love it. It always keeps me on my feet. Thank All you. Right. Thank everybody. you for your help. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank everybody. Thank you for joining us uh, and take care. Bye-bye.